Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel and welcome if you are new. My name is Belle and today I'm going to do a good old fashioned book haul video. Now, I don't have like 30 plus, 100 plus books to haul. I do have like one, two, three, four. I have about 10 books to haul, um, but I'm pretty happy with these books because now I feel like I don't buy books as much now. They are genuinely books that I think I'm going to read, going to get into, I'm trying to really work on my physical TBR these days. And also space. I literally do not have the space. I have books on the top of my bookshelf because I do not have the space for them anymore. So the first three books I have are from a bookshop called Second Chapter in Matlock. And I went to this shop just on a whim. It just looks so cute from the outside. And they had a really cute sign too. So I went in and they had such a lovely collection it was like a really curated collection and they had a whole shelf of Wordsworth classics and because I'm really starting to get into my classics I took the chance and honestly these books were four pounds each I spent less than like 14 pounds in that shop for these three books so the first book I have is Anna Karenina and can we just appreciate how stunning I'm sure I hope you can see like all the colors and the foiling there like it's beautiful this is a translated fiction anna karenina is one of the most loved and memorable heroines of literature her overwhelming charm dominates a novel of unparalleled richness and density tolstoy considered this book to be his real first attempt at a novel form and it addresses the very nature of society at all to le at all levels it ends tragically and there is much that evokes despair yet set beside this is an ab abounding joy in life's many ephemeral pleasures and a profusion of comic relief now, this is complete and unabridged and also translated like i said i'm really excited to read anna karenina because i have heard such amazing things about tolstoy himself and this is going to be my first Tolstoy book as well. And then I picked up two Dostoevsky books, which is Crime and Punishment and the, and the Karamazov Brothers. But again, they're both Wordsworth classics and I just think they are so stunning. Now, the Brothers Karamazov, translated as Fyodor Karamazov, Karamazov? Karamazov awaits an enamorous encounter. He is violently done to death. The three sons of the old Deboshi are forced to confront their own guilt and complicity. Who will own to patricide? The reckless and passionate Dmitri, the corrosive intellectual Ivan, surely not the chaste novice monk Alyosha. So that is the brothers Karamazov. Then we have Crime and Punishment, which I actually did start the other day, but I have only read like three pages so far. I'm enjoying it. This one says, Crime and Punishment is one of the greatest and most readable novels ever written. From the beginning, from the beginning, we are locked into the frenzied consciousness of Rashkolnikov. Against his better judgments, is drawn to commit a brutal double murder. Damn. From the moment on, we share his conflicting feelings of self loathing and pride, of contempt for and need of others, and of his terrible despair and hope of redemption. And in a remarkable transformation of the detective novel, we follow his agonised efforts to probe and confront both his own motives for and the consequences of his crime. Now, I can't lie, both of these books by Dostoevsky just seem really great, and I'm so excited. Like, the size of the brothers Karamazov don't, doesn't really intimidate me because I've read The Count of Monte Cristo. And I feel like I can conquer any book now. Got the works haul. So I bought three books from here. Um, the first book is Let's Split Up by Bill Wood. Now I have seen this book circular, circulating everywhere and I'm so glad because Bill Wood really deserves the praise. I've heard such amazing things about this. Now, now I know that Bill himself markets this as a YA Scooby-Doo type of book, um, a murder mystery as well. So it says, when hot it couple Brad and Shelley are brutally murdered in a manner on the edge of town, a group of friends investigate. A theory spreads around town as fast as a fire on the day of the killings. The old ghoul who hunts the house after his own murder has finally taken revenge. As Cam, Jonesy, Amber and the new girl Buffy search for clues, the rumour feels closer to the truth than they ever did think possible. And as they enter the derelict building themselves, the idea of splitting up to find evidence will prove to be the best or worst decision of all. I guess that relates to the title, Let's Split Up. And I got this for a bargain of £5 from the works. Honestly, I love the works. They are great for new releases, but try and go as soon as something is released because then you're not going to see it anymore then of course i had to pick up a sally rooney book now this is intermezzo again by sally rooney thank god that this does come off but honestly book stickers 
don't really bother me unless they have the ugly netflix sticker i don't like those this was 10 pound from the works in what sorts it was 20 pound i think i understand like what the prices are so i did try to read normal people a while ago and i also watched the show but it didn't appeal to me and I didn't really take away anything from the book and the show itself. But I didn't totally write off Sally Rooney because there has to be a reason why people love her writing so much. So when um, I saw that this book was about two brothers, I was like, count me in because I love a book where it has to do, where it has to do with family ties. So this blurb says, aside from the fact that they are brothers, Peter and Ivan Kubek seem to have little in common. Peter is a Dublin lawyer in his 30s, successful, competent and apparently unassailable. But in the wake of their father's death, he's medicating himself to sleep and struggles to manage his relationships with the two very different women. His enduring first love, Sylvia, and a Naomi, a college student for whom life is one big joke. Ivan is a 22 year old competitive chess player. He has always seen himself as socially awkward, a loner, the antithesis of his glib older brother. Now in his early weeks of bereavement, Ivan meets Margaret, an older woman emerging from her own turbulent past, and their lives become rapidly and intensely intertwined. For two grieving brothers and the people they love, this is a new interlude, a period of desire, despair, possibility, a chance to find out how much one life might hold inside itself without breaking. Like, first of all, the cover is stunning. I love the person here. That's obviously one of the brothers and then one of the brothers in the middle, I'm assuming. I wonder who is who though, because it just seems very ominous at the same time. Clearly, this could potentially break our hearts. And I've seen people crying when they finish this book, so... Yeah, I'm very excited to give Sally Rooney another chance, but really invest myself more into this because I don't think I was paying a lot of attention when I was trying to read Normal People. A lot of it, I think, just went over my head. The last book I picked up from the works was The Dagger and the Flame by Catherine Doyle. Now, this was £8.50. I've yet to take these stickers off. Um, I'm too scared in case I ruin them. This just looks absolutely stunning. I, I was genuinely drawn in by the cover of this book and I'm pretty sure the works I went to, which is the works in Birmingham, the city centre, this is still there. Honestly, like I said, the back of this also drew me in. It says, in a deadly game of revenge, the most dangerous mistake of all is falling in love. Now the blurb for this. In Phantom, a kingdom of cobble streets, flickering lamplight, beautiful buildings and secret catacombs, shade magic is a scarce and deadly commodity controlled by two enemy guilds the cloaks and the daggers, the thieves and the assassins. On the night of her mother's murder, 18-year-old Seraphine runs for her life. Seeking sanctuary with the cloaks, Sarah's heart is on revenge, but are, secret, but are her secret abilities a match for the dark-haired boy whose quicksilver eyes follow her around the city? Nothing can prepare Sarah for the moment she finally comes face to face with Ransom, heir to the Order of Daggers, and Ransom is shocked to discover that this unassuming Farm girl wields a strange and blazing magic he has never seen before. Fiery enemies to lovers, romanticy. I find the word romanticy so funny. Like, anyway, um, I really hope that this book is adult. I've yet to check out if it is adult because I feel like if it's YA, I probably won't enjoy it as much as I do with my adult books now. I've definitely shifted from YA to more adult books. I just don't enjoy YA as much. But yeah, I hope to get to this soon because it sounds like it has real potential and I could really enjoy it. Last three books I have are from Waterstones. I'm so excited about these books. So the first book I bought is, of course, The Three Musketeers by Alexandra Tomas. Now, this is the Everyman's Library edition and these editions are so stunning. They are a little bit more expensive. So this was... 19 pounds but honestly after reading the count of monte cristo i have every single faith that the rest of alexandra demarza's books that i read i'm going to love so i didn't hesitate when i saw this gorgeous hardback i was like okay i did see it in the penguin classics edition but i just this just drew me in more and i was like okay and it also has like a cute little ribbon like why not the blurb for this in what is perhaps the most famous of historical novels, Dumas tells the story of a young D'Artagnan, a poor boy of noble origins who sets out from his provinces to join the king's bodyguard. Once in Paris, he and his companions, Athos, Porthos and Aramis, the three musketeers of the title, find themselves drawn into a power struggle between the queen and the king's chief minister, Cardinal Richelieu. The murky plot, which involves a piece of jewellery given by the Queen to her lover, the Duke of Buckingham, also brings D'Artagnan into contact with the alluring but ruthless Lady de Winter.
More than 20 film versions of this novel and other adaptations, including musicals, bear witness to his dramatic power and enduring appeal. The energy of Dumas' storytelling and the vividness of the world he describes are still hard to resist. Which I highly agree. I feel like everyone has heard of The Three Musketeers. I remember watching the BBC adaptation a while ago when that came out and I remember really enjoying it, but I couldn't tell you like the entire plot or what happened or like what happened to the characters or the overarching plot if you know what I mean. I'm very very excited to read this at some point hopefully this year. So then today I went into Waterstones today and I happened to see this book Maurice by E.M. Forster. Now my friend Perry has spoken about this book and really loves this book and ever since then I have been meaning to read it. I have been meaning to pick it up. I'm pretty sure I have the Kindle edition too and it just sounds fantastic. A tale of bravery and defiance. This intensely personal novel was completed in 1914 but remained unpublished until after Forster's death in 1970. A founding work of modern gay literature, it tells the story of Maurice Hall, a privileged young man who finds himself increasingly attracted to his own sex. Through Clive, whom he encounters at Cambridge, and through Alec, the gamekeeper at Clive's country estate, Maurice gradually experiences a profound and emotional sexual awakening. Maurice offers a powerful condemnation of the repressive attitudes of British society and is at once a moving loves a moving love story and an intimate tale of one man's self-discovery now what i find really interesting about books like this is the time that they were published so this was written in 1914 wasn't published until after wasn't published until after he died so i think this is going to be a very powerful read probably very moving probably very emotional okay now the next book i have was a gift and it was a gift i did not expect and i'm just so I am so happy I have this because I have been talking about why there doesn't seem to be any nice hardback editions of The Count of Monte Cristo. I am so annoyed because I can't seem to find any nice ones. I saw the cloth band editions one. I'm sorry, that is so ugly. What the hell is the green or what the hell is the orange? Asks, okay, but what what is the colour scheme? Like, do they just like pick any random colours? Like, why is there so many editions of Jane Austen? of Emma, of Wuthering Heights, of Bride and Prejudice, of all these other books I can't seem to think of right now, Shakespeare. There doesn't seem to be a lot of editions of The Count of Monte Cristo. Now it could be the fact that I live in the UK and it's not a UK book. It's French. It's French. So, and I obviously read the tra translation, but still, like, surely there should be a bit more. I even looked for it in this edition, but the Everman Library edition, but where this was, they didn't have anything for the Count of Monte Cristo. So then today I walked into the classic section and you know how they have the displays on the side of the shelves? They had this. This stunning, I don't even know what this is, what edition this is, like... Who printed this? Not a clue, but I uh, don't care because it's gold. It's gilded. It's gold. It's beautiful. All this on the shelf and the gasp, I gasped. I have never seen something so beautiful. It was like fate. It was genuinely fate because I, I needed a hardback of the Count of Monte Cristo. Oh my God. This is going to be pride and joy of my bookshelves like the gold has a little ribbon too and let's open it together for the first time right i'm so excited okay so beautiful end pages oh it's so stunning Oh, I love it. Heavy book. I'm struggling to hold it with my one hand. Oh, my God. oh it's the Barnes & Noble edition. You know what? I had a feeling I've seen this before. And it must have been when I was asking people about why there seems to be no editions of the Count of Monte Cristo in hardback. And it must be, this is the Barnes & Noble edition. It's gorgeous. Oh, my God. I'm so happy. And there's the ribbon. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful cannot wait to read them all but yeah those are all the amazing books that i have hauled today i'm so excited genuinely i think the first book i'm probably going to read is crime and punishment because like i said i started that and then i'm thinking intermezzo because i really want to read that and it just came out so i want to be one of those girlies who read it when it came out you know and probably after intermezzo i mean there's other things on my tbr but in terms of this pile probably 
let's split up because that's a short book it probably won't take me too long to read and even though it's YA I still think I'm going to enjoy it because I really like a mystery it just sounds like a fun read and like it's going to be quite haunting too so I'm very excited for that those are all the books that I have bought recently thank you so much for watching I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll catch you guys in the next one mm -hmm.